Financial advisors help Australians live better lives. And we're great at it. But what about us? For us to thrive in the coming years, I'm here to ask a very big question. How can we live better, run better businesses, and help more clients along the way? My name is Jessica Brady, and I would love for you to join me as I listen and learn from experts who answer these very big questions. I am lucky enough to record most of my podcasts on Gadigal Land. Zurich is the proud partner supporting this episode. As one of Australia's largest life insurers, Zurich encourages the promotion of positive conversations leading to a more sustainable future for life insurance. Committed to championing financial advice through education and research-led market insights. Ever heard the phrase, what do financial advisors actually do? Yeah, me too, all the time. It seemed to me that maybe as a profession, even though we see ourselves as fantastic communicators, we hadn't done a great job at communicating to the wider world what it is that we actually do. And now more than ever, we really need to have an attention and a focus to how we communicate to the wider world. So I thought, why not interview a copywriting expert to help us learn how we can communicate not only to our existing clients, but people who might in fact need our help, but not know exactly what we do. Please enjoy my interview with Lucinda Starr. And today I am absolutely delighted to be interviewing Lucinda Starr, who is the founder of the Star Studio and also an amazing copywriter. Lucy is going to help us unpack all things copywriting as she did for me about three years ago. So a huge welcome, Lucinda. Hello. Hi, Jess. So excited to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining us because this is an area where I feel often overwhelmed, actually. And I know that that resonates deeply with a lot of other financial advisors, particularly those that are running a business and just think, great, another thing to add to my to-do list or must-do list. And I know often this is something that is vitally important, but not always deemed urgent and therefore gets put sort of on the do that when I have time, which is almost never to-do list. So what I would love to do today is really unpack from your side of things, you know, how can busy financial advisors, you know, really think strategically about how they are present online through the, you know, through communication uh, and all things that you do uh, and the practical steps around understanding, you know, what is copywriting? What do you need to think about if you're going to engage someone and what do you expect to see on the other side? Perfect. I'm very excited. There's a lot to tackle. So let's dive in. So Lucy, what is copywriting? So it's weirdly a misunderstood term. And I think that's Mm. very interesting. So essentially copywriting is a specialized part of marketing. So copywriters are essentially people who craft written copy for businesses and brands. And the ultimate aim is to connect with audiences, to build trust and to convince people to do something. So Mm -hmm. copywriting typically in these days exists online. So it's websites, it's every social post you write, it's every email newsletter you send out, um, but it can also be offline as well. So think billboards, print advertising, radio, all those sort of things as well. Um, So yeah, it is a specialized skill. It takes Mm. a lot of time. And I think when people think of copywriting, typically they think of the end product. So they see the 20 character social caption, they see the finished web page. But ultimately, to get copywriting right, it involves understanding your audience, who you're speaking to, and really investing upfront in the strategic work around, yeah, really getting on into the needs, challenges, aspirations of your audience, and finding the right way to develop a tone of voice that will connect with them, that speaks their language and yeah, convinces them to do something. It's so interesting because, you know, if I think about myself, I quite like writing copy and yet the time it takes Lucy to get it right, it is such, it's so hard. Like if you haven't actually really um, done a lot of it, I remember when I originally started um our business and we were writing the copy for the website, I honestly think we spent weekends trying to get one page worth of copy right. And so it's not that I couldn't do it. It's just the time investment. Um, Is that why a lot of people would choose to outsource to a copywriter? Like why do most people who run small businesses come and 
say, we need your help. Absolutely. It is the time piece is huge. You know, I have so many clients coming to me telling me how many times they've rewritten their LinkedIn bio or that one mm. page they needed to send out for a piece of PR. It It's huge. And I often find the main motivator for sending it to an external professional is they want some kind of distance between themselves and the business. So it's really tricky to write punchy, short, convincing copy when you're across everything in the business, like most small business owners are. So getting that element of perspective and often a mm. fresh perspective from an expert is really why a lot of people do choose to outsource to a copywriter or even hire their own in-house copywriter as well. Um, it's the time piece. It's also understanding how you want to use your time. So I often find a lot of business owners really want to be working on growing their business, recruiting team members, onboarding new clients. And that in itself is so much work. And so to add in the marketing piece of understanding how to build your presence online and writing mm. all of your copy from scratch, it's it's an overwhelming task. And as you mentioned, it often is there prioritized and popped at the bottom of the to-do list because there is simply only so many hours in a week and it can feel almost pointless to be spending so much time writing words. But those words ultimately, especially on things like your website and socials, are the things that are going to bring in new business, are the things that are going to keep people coming to you and also keeping your current clients engaged as well. So yeah, it's a time thing. It's a uh, working smarter on what you do best rather than mm. spending your time working on things that will ultimately take up a lot of your week. Um, when someone, a professional can do it quicker and often deliver a, a better outcome as well. You know, as you were saying that, I was just thinking about the world that we live in now. I am recording from my very sophisticated spare bedroom slash office. Um, I love it. As I am on my dining are... table. <laughs> Beautiful. As many of us are, are now embracing the sort of hybrid and or complete work from home life, it literally just struck me then at how much more important our virtual presence is and our tone of voice and all of the things because we don't have that traditional, you know, shop frontage anymore or what have you to sort of say, this is who we are and this is what we're about. We've all become so used to learning about brands via their digital means. And yet, as you very rightly point out, like it does just feel like another thing that becomes almost put in the too hard basket and and yet more than ever we need to have a focus and and um we need to respect the fact that our existing clients or members and our future clients or members sort of need to build trust via that and if you don't have a good social interface or good website copy or a good website i immediately feel turned off Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, if you think about, I often put myself in the shoes of a customer or client. So whenever I'm deciding to work with either a service provider or purchase from a brand, where do I go? I look at their socials. I look at reviews. I check out their website. I look for pieces of social proof. So I look for them to see what they're about, to get an understanding of what they stand for, what's their personality. And I feel like particularly with service providers, because there ultimately are so many people who do exactly what you do. Things like your personality, the kind of service you deliver, what you, mm. you stand for as a business become so important because they are the things that ultimately set you apart from every single other, for instance, advisor that exists who is servicing the same sorts of clients. So by having someone who can really understand what makes you different and what what are those points of difference that will resonate with your potential members and clients, that's so valuable because as soon as they land on your website, they're going to feel really seen. They're going to resonate with everything that's there. And it just makes the process of, I suppose, vetting potential clients as well a lot easier because people mm. will automatically know, is this person right for me? Am I aligning with their current client base? Or yeah, is this the right solution for the problems that I've got? So yes, and super so important. Sorry, it is very, very important. <laughs> what I am keen to do, because it's lovely to talk about how important this is and then go back to your inbox or busy day. I, I'm really keen that if people are listening to this, that they can leave today's conversation and go, okay, here's the things that if I'm actually going to do it, here's what I need to consider and just fire off and go and do. So let's talk really strategic and tactically. When you look for a copywriter, 
how should you best approach this? And I guess the success or failure in it, I would imagine, is trying to help them understand you and your niche and and your personality. Um, how do, I, I mean, I assume that the financial advisor almost provides like a brief to the copywriter. Is that a thing? What should, Lucy, just help us. What do we do? <laughs> Absolutely. So I think let's take a step back before we get to the briefing stage. Let's look yep. at kind of like what to look for in a copywriter and how do I guess find one that like fits your needs as well? Because I think that's the important piece because there's a, a whole bunch of ways to work with copywriters. So you can mm -hmm. either go down the path of hiring an in-house employee, so hiring a copywriting specialist or a marketing specialist who joins your team and works in-house for you as an employee. Yep. The other option, particularly for smaller businesses or businesses who are just starting out, it mm. can be really nice to outsource that to either a freelancer or a small agency who focuses on copywriting. And so mm -hmm. in that relationship, it would be a contractor relationship where they have their own ABN and invoice you as a contractor. Mm -hmm. And that often works quite well if you are uh, unsure if you're ready to make an ongoing investment into copywriting or you have very specific tasks that you would like help with. For instance, mm -hmm. you've got a designer designing your website and you're trying to write the copy but are feeling overwhelmed and it's taking too long. Mm -hmm. In that instance, hiring a freelance copywriter is great because they can come in, fix that exact problem and provide the service for that one project. Yeah. At the same time, you can also work with uh, freelance copywriters on an ongoing basis. So typically they'd be able to set up things like retainers where if you would like them to do manage your social captions or your blog posts or your email newsletters and just take that off your plate every single month, they can work out a monthly fee for you to do that on an ongoing basis. So mm -hmm. I think first and foremost, think about what tasks do you want them to take off your plate and mm. consider do you want them to join your team or are you happy to outsource to an expert who runs their own business? That's kind of mm -hmm. step one. Mm -hmm. Then I think you need to really understand what to look for in a good copywriter or what kind of questions to ask even before we get to the briefing stage. So good. first up, think about a portfolio or examples of their work. So mm -hmm. most copywriters will have either a website with case studies or examples of previous copy they've written. Some people will have a PDF that's sort of a portfolio of all the work they've done and projects that they're really proud of. And I think within that, um, asking for specific examples of the tasks you were thinking of outsourcing. So if you'd like someone to write an award submission for you, See if mm -hmm. they've got something similar that they can provide to really give a flavour of what what their style of writing is and if it kind of feels like it could align with your needs as well. So mm -hmm. be really specific and feel free to ask for specific examples to give you as much information as you can to choose between different copywriters. It can also be helpful to look for things like case studies or testimonials. So often on people's websites, they might have previous happy clients vouching for their work. And that's yeah. always a nice one just to see that other people have vouched for their expertise and mm. ability to transform, you know, complex ideas into the copy they were looking for. Mm. Um, and I also think when it comes to the stage of potentially emailing and chatting with a couple of different copywriters that you've found through your research, I think it's all about thinking about what kind of experience they're offering you as well. So making sure that you're finding a copywriter that from the get go makes you feel really confident makes you feel really assured that they know what they're doing, that they've got clear processes in place to really understand their process as well. So they, from mm. the get-go, should be able to start to advise you on what could be the right way to work together. Um, and then it comes into their briefing process as well. So I think when we think about briefing, it's all about giving all the information and knowledge about your business to the copywriter and making sure they're really informed about essentially what you expect from them in return. So mm -hmm. a really great copywriter should provide you with some kind of questionnaire, template or framework with all the info that they'll need. Um, and so they should give you some kind of piece of document that you can fill out to share everything from what your business goals and objectives are to uh, how you want to sound as a brand and what you stand for, all the way down to the specifics of the actual task you're wanting to outsource to them. So what key messages do you want to highlight? What things and words do you want to avoid? 
being really mm-hmm. clear and prescriptive to kind of give them a clear sense of the scope of the project itself to quote accurately mm-hmm. as well as when they're actually delivering the work making sure they're actually you're on the same page from the beginning um, so I think that is really important to make sure that process is clear and you that you feel like you're setting them up with everything they need to succeed essentially yeah and I think that that takes the burden certainly from my perspective, you know, having someone send you a briefing document that asks all of the questions that they want to know, you can just do it once, know that you've covered all of the things that they are likely going to need. And then that creates opportunity to just kind of clarify rather than having to start from scratch. Yeah, exactly. And I think what should happen after that briefing process is the copywriter should come back to you with some kind of scaffold or a sort of dot pointed idea of what they think the product or piece of copy is going to look like. So again, there's that moment for you to feedback and make sure you're still on the same page and making sure it's really collaborative and that although you are taking this task off your plate, you're still getting a finished product that feels aligned to what you actually want. There's nothing worse Mm. than kind of ending the project journey and still feeling a bit like things didn't sound the way you wanted it to sound. Whereas if throughout that process you've really been involved and able to feed back in clear and concise ways, that makes sure that what you end up with is actually not lost in translation and it's clear. The irony of miscommunication with communication yes. professionals, but it is real. <laughs> it's real, yes. And then so let's say we do the briefing document, we get it mm-hmm. nailed because we are exceptional. Uh what can you then expect? So let's say that you do, you find someone, you feel like they're a good fit for you, you do the briefing document. Like in terms of tangibly, you know, let's say that we wanted them to, the copywriter to help with anything and everything that is comms related. Like what are we, what should we expect as the benefits of having a copywriter do, do that for us versus us doing it ourselves? Yeah, that's a really good question. So essentially you should expect someone to be able to take very time consuming tasks off your plate and really understand how to deliver them uh, efficiently and effectively month to month or on a one-off basis. So it should be a feeling like you are supported and you have a professional that really gets your business and can actually become sort of a custodian of how your brand should sound online and be mm. able to execute that. I find, for example, at Starship Year, we often work with clients on an ongoing basis. So yeah. after a couple of months, you really understand what the brand voice is. You really understand what the client likes and doesn't like. And during those initial pieces of feedback, your copywriter should be learning and next time won't say that word again or will phrase things differently. So over time, the longer the relationship goes on, the copywriter becomes more efficient and more cost effective because they are better at their job. They really understand who you are. So ultimately it's about spending money in the right places to get the job done more effectively. Mm -hmm. Um, I think in terms of, there's two sides to it as well in terms of uh, business benefits. So Mm -hmm. it's about being able to attract the right clients to you. So Mm -hmm. as soon as they land on your digital shop front, your website or your socials, they really understand what you stand for and they feel really clearly guided through your website to take a specific form of action. So for instance, it might be to book that first initial conversation or coffee. They really actually make it through that journey and you're starting to see an uptick in the number of inquiries you're getting. Um, And then potentially during those conversations, you might even start to hear that potential clients are starting to actually highlight that they really liked your brand and saw you as a leader in your field because of the way your website was structured or the way that your copy was written. So you're starting to see some sort of intangible but really uh, impactful benefits to um, having a copywriter writing that for you. And mm-hmm. then for your existing members as well, it's about making sure everyone feels really supported. So mm-hmm. I think when we're so caught up in the day-to-day running a business, um, going that sort of extra mile to provide extra resources and value and content to existing members can easily become that task that just feels too hard in a list of so many conflicting priorities. So I think by having someone who is, that's their dedicated job is to find ways to strategically keep your current clients engaged and to make that as impactful and valuable for your business as possible. That also means that the retention is really strong for the business as well. 
So, mm. yeah, I think it comes back to both bringing in new business and keeping your existing clients happy. That's the huge benefits to having a copywriter and someone who that is just their dedicated job. They're there to support you, come up with new ideas and find better ways of phrasing things to have a stronger impact on your business. And I think we need to myth bust that good copy, good social presence, good website, copy the text, <laughs> I guess it's copy. Um, it's copy, yeah. Isn't just for young people. Like I think we've, we've, we hear, because our industry predominantly works with people that are a little bit older, you know, maybe Absolutely. five years out from retirement or in retirement age, you know, often we can get caught up in this belief of, you know, oh, well, that's for the millennials and, you know, that's what millennials need. And, and actually we know that women over 50 are like the most prolific on Facebook these days, et cetera. So can you help me? Is it, This is a myth, right? Good copy is not just important for people who work with younger people. Absolutely. If you think about any business, just no matter what their audience is, even businesses that are targeting very like an older demographic, absolutely are investing in their copy and making sure it feels aligned and doesn't feel like it's trying to attract the wrong audience. Mm. It's so important. And I think often the reason younger brands tend to prioritize it is because they they see the direct benefits themselves as a consumer. But I think the more that everyone is using the internet and everyone is searching for businesses online, COVID's really accelerated this, right? There's mm. I think the first point of contact, no matter what age or demographic you are with a business, will be online. And so mm. making sure that actually understands how to speak to potentially a older audience as well and what kind of language we should be using and how to make sure things showcase expertise without sounding too stiff and corporate, but also not sounding too young. That's a skill. To get that mm. balance right is a massive skill. Um, so it's totally a myth, I think. Younger brands do it well and more prolifically, often because they've got younger teens. But I think mm. it's almost an area of opportunity that isn't being explored enough, in my opinion. I think a lot of advice businesses, particularly the bigger, more established ones, tend to sort of believe it's sort of a set and forget and you've got the words on the page and you've got all the jargon filling all of the documents and it all clients will keep coming because they always have. But I think there are more options now and there's always going to be more options coming in and with more competition comes the need to stand out and to really yeah. figure out how can I attract the right people to the business and keep them coming in. So I think it needs to be an ongoing priority. I think that's so true in that it's an area of complete opportunity if you're looking after an older demographic. I mean, just as a random example, my grandmother lives in a very tiny rural farming town in the bottom of New Zealand. She's never had internet. She's never had a computer. She has Instagram. Amazing. And she uses it really well. You know, she's in her 90s. She's very capable um, and I'm very proud of her. But I think that that in itself, and there's so many countless examples of that, oh, but, for sure. you know, we can't keep pretending that digital is for younger people. It is not. Um, and so I think if, you're, if your strategy is she'll be right or we've never needed to focus on this, that might have got you so far, but I'm not convinced that it's going to get you where you need to be in the future. No, absolutely not. And I, yeah. Tell me, what are the mistakes people make? I think first and foremost, and this is something we've covered already, deprioritizing copy, not making mm. it a priority. So I see a lot of businesses focus on their visual identity. So getting their branding looking great, investing in a logo, making sure their graphics look beautiful, potentially even hiring photographers to get beautiful headshots or lifestyle shots of their teams. But yet once it comes to ultimately one of the most important parts of the whole branding journey, your copy, it seems to fall onto often a junior employee who's wearing all the hats in the business and is the marketing go-to but also the admin go-to and often I feel it becomes that thing of ticking a box so mm. anyone can write copy we know that but ultimately if you want it to be an asset for your business it also needs the same level of investment that you'd put into a graphic designer or a bookkeeper it's again a specialized offering and I think by not prioritizing it, there's just huge opportunity that's being missed to really connect with people um, and your ideal audience ultimately. Um, and I think, yeah. again, in industries, particularly like finance, where there is a lot of jargon floating around with a lot of technical terms, I do think that I have seen a lot of businesses fall into the trap of letting jargon showcase expertise. Mm. And ultimately, I think it in a leader in their field is someone who can speak to a really general everyday audience 
and showcase what they know in ways that don't leave people scratching their head and wondering what that means or having to mm. Google all these terms dropped in websites or conversation. So I think being able to articulate what you do in a way that is speaking your audience's language, whatever that looks like, no matter whether they're in their 20s or in their 50s, 60s plus, really understanding how your audience actually speaks themselves and replicating that language in ways that feel authentic to your business ultimately allows you to resonate with the kind of clients you want to attract. So that's another big one. I think jargon is huge, particularly in finance. I see it everywhere. We bloody love it. We are obsessed with jargon. And to your point, we like to use jargon maybe, A, because it's just in our sort of everyday vernacular and we forget that people don't speak like this in real life. Exactly. Um, but I do think we like to use it to showcase expertise. And to your point, it creates this big disconnect and we know that it makes people feel often like a barrier or a wall is put up because they feel like, well, I don't really understand what on earth this is talking about. So I have no idea whether this is what I'm meant to be doing or not. This has become too hard. I'll look at it later. Thank you. Which of course we know doesn't often happen. So that is a hugely important um, piece of advice there in terms of, you know, getting someone who is completely outside of our industry to run their eyes over something and be really ruthless and honest about saying like, this makes so much sense or I have absolutely no idea what you are trying to say here. And often simplicity is underrated. For sure. Absolutely. I've written at length about this, about the benefits of hiring a copywriter that doesn't necessarily have industry expertise. So mm. there is so much value in having a copywriting or marketing professional that is so good at their job that they can take even the most complex of subject matter and make it convincing and engaging for an audience. And someone who's actually got that separation from all the kind of industry terms that are thrown around, because ultimately your audience are not going to know what they mean. And mm. it's a disengaging tactic in a lot of ways, it causes people to go, like you said, oh, it's too hard. I don't understand it. A lot of people feel afraid to even clarify what these terms mean as well. So it continues sort of a knowledge gap for a lot of customers as well who might not even really understand what they're getting themselves into when they're signing on for a new um, yeah, amount of services. So I think the more that you can do to speak in everyday language that's engaging and unique and stands out from everyone else in your field, the more people will come to you because they'll really understand who you are um, and you, you'll feel like a human as well. You won't just feel like, you know, a PDS that's full of like all the terms in the, the dictionary as well. <laughs> Look at you with a cute little acronym for finance. Oh, no. Well done. <laughs> well done. Okay. So let's sort of recap. We've looked for a copywriter because we've decided this is ridiculous. I cannot keep waiting slash pretending that I can do it well myself. We find one that we feel like is a good fit. We complete the briefing doc. We have some, you know, discussions around exactly what they're coming on to do, whether they're in-house. I suspect given that a lot of businesses um, are the size that they are, it's more likely that they're going to be more a retainer and an outsourced model for either a particular piece of work or an ongoing sort of day-to-day -day management of specifics. How do we know that we've done a good job? How do we know, like, what are the success metrics or benchmarks that we can use to actually say this has worked out really well apart from feeling like we've put a giant tick in our to-do list yes which is also feels great and there's also a massive benefit but i do think there are specific things that you will start to notice when you have got someone on your team who's specializing in copy so first and foremost i think what you'll start to see is um sort of a sentiment around conversations about your business where you'll see people noticing uh mentioning you in conversation they might mention your website presence they might mention your social presence and say oh i really remembered seeing that from you or i remember seeing this blog post that you wrote i think it's about being memorable uh and mm. making people realize that you're there and you're present and you're top of mind so not only so with potential clients they'll see you and be yeah, they'll remember you as sort of a someone in your field to watch out for. There's also, I guess, specific metrics around the different placements that you can place copy. So websites, emails, social. Um, I think within all of those, it's also important to call out that copy exists alongside other uh, industries. So it exists alongside graphic design. It exists alongside web design. 
So often the success of copy is not simply the words on the page. It's also how fast does the website load? It's Mm. how beautiful are the graphics? It's does the photography match the words that you've written? So ultimately there are a few different moving parts at play, but I'll rattle off a few kind of metrics to start looking at um, once you do invest in the copywriter, just to see if you're really getting some actual tangible benefit from that as well. Mm -hmm. So with websites, if you're investing in someone to uh, particularly do blog content or perhaps refresh the structure of your pages and the copy that's on them, if they're using what's called SEO principles, so that's search engine optimization, essentially Mm -hmm. finding keywords that are high traffic and relevant to your business and placing them in the copy. If they're doing that well, you'll start to notice that you're seeing an increase in website page visitors. So you're Mm -hmm. starting to see when someone Googles those particular terms, your website is starting to appear in those results. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And also seeing time on page. So the actual length of time that an individual person is spending on your page, if your copy is really engaging and speaks their language and is filled with value and gets their needs and what they want to do and where they want to go, they'll spend longer on your website. And that's Mm -hmm. really valuable because that means that they're actually not just seeing something and jumping off elsewhere and finding another website to scroll. They're really engaging with what you have to say. So that's really valuable. So start to have a look at those. And these are sort of they're medium to long term metrics as well to be tracking. You know, you won't Mm -hmm. see log on one day after your website's been refreshed and suddenly everything's up and triple the website visitors. But it's a long game and you will start to see some positive impact from that as well. Um, With email marketing, so I know a lot of people send out either newsletters to their existing members or potentially new members. If you're Mm -hmm. starting to see your open rates increase, typically if you've got a copywriter working with you, the way they're writing that subject line, so the copy that appears in people's inboxes, Mm -hmm. if they're getting that right and really understanding how to drive action, you'll start to see more people opening your emails month to month. So that Mm -hmm. should be something you can quantify and measure. Um, again, click through rates. So once people are in the email, if they're actually taking action, visiting your website, book an inquiry, reading something that your copywriter has written, that's also a good sign that the copy in the emails as well is driving action. Mm -hmm. And then for social media, there are a few things to, I guess, have a look at. So I like to look at engagement metrics. So things like how many people are liking, commenting, saving and sharing your posts. The better the copy is written and the more tailored it is to your audience, over time you will see an increase in that engagement, which shows Mm. that people are really not only more interested in your business but also potentially sharing it with their friends who could also be a good lead for your business as well. And then ultimately as well, starting to look at things like are they actually taking action from your social posts? So are you starting to see people tagging their friends? Are you starting to see people leave a comment when in the caption you ask them to share something in the comments with you? So are you seeing that feedback loop of your audience on social media responding to the copy that's been written for you? So they're kind of a few broad ones and obviously there are, it will depend really on the level of support you're getting, What if it's an ongoing relationship versus a project relationship with the copywriter. But ultimately there's a ton of benefits, both quantitative as well as sort of that word of mouth referral, brand awareness piece where people will start to really have a positive association with your brand as well. Thank you. And I think that that's a really important piece around, you know, it's, it's, it's an investment and it's a long game. Like you're not just going to post one thing on social media that a copywriter wrote and suddenly have your doors being banged down as much as that would be possibly a lovely um, aspiration. It, it's, it's probably not realistic. Exactly. Uh, but I want to come back to one point that you've said before around sort of this idea of it being an ecosystem, if you will, around, you know, graphic design and, and um, imagery and all of that stuff practically how does that work like do you work with a graphic designer as the copywriter does that fall to the financial advice business like how do you normally see clients interlink all of those different services absolutely and that's a really good point because i think it can be overwhelming who does what who do i go to for all the different things Mm -hmm. so i always like to say i prefer copywriting to come first so i love when clients come to me before they've designed their website and said hey we want to do this project can you help us get the messaging and the language 
nailed down and the structure. And then often I, our team doesn't do, copy, it doesn't do graphic design, but we do have a number of other agencies that we often refer our clients to have chats with. Mm. So ultimately it's about finding either um, an individual copywriter who can refer you to the appropriate designer or web designer to support you through the design part of the project. Um, but I do think getting the copywriting sorted first is always a good kind of workflow to work with. Um, okay. And then also, obviously, you can find your own web designers. I often find um, talking to other business owners that you know is also a really good source of um, referrals. Going onto mm. websites that you love, often there's a site credit down the bottom where the designer of the website will have their links and how to contact them. So if you ever do see a, a site that you love, often look for that because that's a really easy way to get what you want as well. Um, and I would say as well, it's nice to have the copywriter, particularly for things like websites, come back into the project right before the website is published. So once their words have been designed and put into this beautiful layout, getting them just to have a final look over everything and make sure it flows and it all feels like it's kind of come to life in the right way. I think that's really good because then you've kind of got that full end to end service from them. Um, so they can really see often things can change when you've got them in a visual layout. So it's good to have, yeah, their support and they're them touching it again right before it goes out into the world as well. But yeah, hopefully that answers sort of the workflow question. I think it definitely does. And it has me giggling that I did it the complete wrong way around when we designed <laughs> our website. <laughs> There's no right or wrong, but I mean, that's just the way I prefer to work, I suppose. No, it makes total logical sense. I just didn't know enough. And that is the benefit of hindsight and listening to an expert. Um, and, you know, if you are sitting there thinking, I need to do a website refresh, I think that that piece of insight or intel is really hugely beneficial because end up you end up retrofitting things and it takes so much longer and things don't look correct. And I literally remember our designer coming with like 700 pieces of paper to the office with like different layout designs and nothing fit. And it took so much longer, probably because we did it the wrong way around, Lucy. Oh, the benefit of hindsight though. I mean, you just, that's the thing. Let's talk about our relationship because I didn't know what a copywriter was before I met you and I was not reluctant, but I was busy and I was like, yeah, mm -hmm, we'll get to this. So we've been, um, you and I have been working together for about three years. That's right. 2019. It was an evolutionary process in that I was in that loop of being too busy to invest the time to give you the work to then have you help me. <laughs> um, however, I think as someone who has seen the benefit of outsourcing and outsourcing to someone who is structured and has a lot of rigor, which I do not, um, has been hugely beneficial because it's created accountability for me as well. Like I have regular sort of check-ins with you and we work on a retainer model where, you know, I have to give you something for you to post, otherwise there's nothing going out. And so it does create that accountability, which we all thrive when we have. Um, and you also tell me when stuff is not good, which is also hugely important. Or if you're like, Jess, this is not on brand. And I'll give you a really good example. So Lucy and her team, they work for sort of three different voices or personas, I guess you would say for us. So there's our financial advice business, which has a different tone of voice to my personal voice on Instagram and on social media. And then we have Ladies Talk Money, which is an online platform that we started a couple of years ago. What's been quite interesting is that you and your team have been able to distill quite different tones of voice. All of those have different tones of voices and different sort of um, messaging and comm styles. And knowing that you will literally just take that off me once you've been briefed properly and come back to me with, and I know that we've sort of talked about it being consultative, but often it's just like, is this what you mean? And I literally reply, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and then exactly. you go and do it. Um, has been honestly ex extremely beneficial because every time I see someone, the most common thing that they say to me is, I see you everywhere. You're everywhere. I see you all over social media. Um, you know, I loved your post and I'm like, wow, thanks. Because I really feel like beyond sort of my monthly chat with you, it's actually not a huge investment of my time at all. Now that you've been able to really understand and learn those three different voices and what we're looking for from those different voices. 
Absolutely. And I think it's just about doing the initial work. So we worked together and figured out the strategies and the tone of voice of each of the brands. And once you have that document in place, not only am I empowered and my team are empowered to write on brand copy for each of those settings, the Fox and Hair team are also empowered to do the same and it's consistent. So Mm. I think creating things like tone of voice guidelines are so valuable because it gives you practical examples about this word's on brand, this is off brand. Here are some templates and examples for you to start DIYing your copy. So if an in-house marketing manager or someone in the admin team needs to send out comms as well, there's also that like framework to come back to, Mm. to give you the structure to make sure everything feels consistent as well. And it is, I mean, most of my clients, we do a monthly meeting where we do the brainstorm and we chat through what the next month of content looks like. We get the priorities sorted. And then it's over to us and we handle it end to end. And there's an approval moment where everyone can weigh in on what they like, what they don't like. So you still feel like you have that touch point of knowing what's going out. But at the same time, you don't physically have to be sitting there staring at a blinking cursor, trying to write some copy. You've got someone managing that, doing it super efficiently and you reap the benefits. So yeah, it's, it's a no brainer in my opinion. Yeah. I mean, uh, well, I mean, I feel like I've drunk the Kool-Aid too, but, um, you know, the, the idea, if you'd have told me a few years ago, oh, you know, you will sit and you will do a strategy on this and you will write a tone of voice document. I'd be like, listen, lady, I've got SOAs to write. Like I've got things to do, but it does pay dividends. It is, it is such an interesting journey that I have been on um, where I am, I am so sold. And this is why I wanted to have you as a guest, because I know truly how much you've created capacity in my day to day. And you create that accountability and that rigor so that I cannot forget. I cannot push it aside because you very politely remind me like, there is nothing to go out next month unless you get on top of this. And actually, you know, being vulnerable and open, which I want to do on this podcast, you and I had a good chat at the end of last year. And we were being really honest about the fact that my Instagram wasn't enough of me. And I wasn't putting, injecting enough of my sort of own unique quirkiness. And so we had a good kind of re-energized, re-planning meeting. And then we agreed, okay, well, this is what I need to do to get this to, to be more like me and more authentically me. And the results, even over the last sort of month or so, since we've started posting some of that content that we've, we've sort of tweaked, has been hugely different. Absolutely. And I do think it's about having that kind of collaborative process where we were, we've been working together for so long and this is what should happen in this working relationship where you have the confidence to make those strategic recommendations around this is a personal brand for you. And as much as, you know, I can go off a list of dot points, we really need your voice and we need you to be present and to be vulnerable if that's what you want to do. And having that feedback loop and being able to pivot and not being stuck in a set and forget black and white strategy and being able to go, this is going to evolve and it needs to evolve because doing the same thing for three years is not going to work and it's going to need to evolve as well. So I think that's been super valuable and it's awesome to see such an uptick as well. It's great to see like that direct impact of we change the messaging, we change the structure of the way the copy reads and instantly engagement is up, reach is up, people are commenting and tagging and loving it and it's just that's yeah it makes me so happy because I love seeing that and I love seeing the yeah the direct impact of yeah our work and us shifting strategy you know I was sending Lucy um, screenshots and of texts of dms of insta messages that people I knew or people that I didn't know you know telling me how much they resonated with my content how much they loved what I was talking about how they wanted to learn more about what I did like I was I was sort of overwhelmed but I was immediately told hey, we can see that you're being different. We love it and it's working. And we saw an uptick actually in people reaching out for coffee. So um, we're recording this in February, but I now do not have coffee availability until April. And so there has been, I know, uh, (laughs) just like breathe deeply. It's a great but challenging problem. And so there has been, there has been a huge, um, uh, uptick in reach out. And I think it was, it's back to what you were saying before. It's because you, we are selling our own brand. We're selling ourselves, our trust, our credibility, our vulnerability. We're selling us. Even if you're part of a bigger business, we're really um, selling the, the person that's going to be your confidant. And so, you know, I have shifted my, my belief system around not just having a business identity and a business communication strategy. I have also 
now realize that I do need my own personal one. And, and, you know, I don't think I would have got that message loud and clear without, you know, a copywriter or your, your team's help. So I want to say a big thank you. Um, just to sort of round out today's conversation, I'm going to ask you some rapid fire questions, but um, I think that, you know, what you've done is given everyone a really good overview of what is copywriting, because frankly, I don't think a huge amount of us know a copywriter or use regularly a, a copywriter. Um, some very, very good tips on sort of what to look for and what to do and, and how to know whether you've made it or not. Are there any other sort of points that you don't think we've talked on today or case studies or anything that you want to talk about that um, I haven't allowed you to speak about yet? I feel like I've got so much of the floor today. Um, the only other thing I would say is don't be afraid to speak to multiple copywriters don't be afraid to have multiple conversations. Again, you're picking someone that you want to work with. And so making mm. sure you find the right fit for what you need, the way you work um, and ask heaps of questions. Like be really uh, particular about what you want and make sure that you're on the same page from the beginning because ultimately I think that's the best way to have any working relationship is to find someone who, for instance, can add structure to all the big ideas you have or whatever it looks like for you. So I think, yeah, that's the only other piece of sort of wisdom I would give is just have a whole bunch of coffees, have a whole bunch of conversations with copywriters, find the right fit for you. Um, and then that should lead you to the best success. Totally. Uh, thank you. This has been very That's valuable and, and the proof is in the doing. So I think it's just about making that momentum and just, you know, getting online and finding one and then, you know, going and booking in a couple more and, you know, committing that over the next, say, four weeks, you'll meet three, which is not that big of a commitment from a time perspective, especially because everything's virtual. Um, but the worst thing you can do is be given all of this great insight and then place it very politely on your to-do list, which sometimes gathers a tiny wee bit of dust. Okay, absolutely are you ready for rapid fire. Always ready, born ready. I make, I make it sound scary. It's not scary at all. <laughs> I, I'm really wanting to tackle, you know, how do we live great lives? And today's conversation is really to help business owners create better businesses, which hopefully helps them live better lives, but also creates better client outcomes because you end up finding the right fit. But I want to turn inwardly. And so I want to know, what do you do to look after your mental health? A lot of things. Um, I always keep Fridays as meeting free days. Um, okay. I find it's really nice to end my week with no client meetings and I can just smash through my to-do list or whatever that looks like. Uh, the other thing is I am mildly obsessed with Pilates. So I do that religiously three to four times a week. Um, wow. I really enjoy it. I find it's just such a good mental health break. I'm in a class, so I can't have my phone out like I usually do at the gym. I've just got to be present. Everything's switched off. I love it. I think moving your body in whatever way feels good is so, so important. And I make sure I do that at least three days of the week. So I'm getting moving and getting out. And having a dog and walking my dog every morning and night is another really big perspective moment and just gives me a chance to leave the phone at home, be out in the park, going for a walk and just kind of realizing that life is bigger than your to-do list. And mm -hmm. it's just such a nice moment to yeah, see how simple and happy a little dog can be at the park and yeah, chatting to your neighbors. And I don't know, I think, you know, the same thing, Jess, after getting a dog, it's so nice to just have them as like a reason to end your day and not be chained at the desk at 9 PM still. Yes. Yes, yes. Rain, hail or shine. I'm with you on that one in terms of dog walks. Yes. Um, okay, next one is what is one piece of advice you would give to your younger self? Don't be afraid to ask the question, whether that's a raise, whether that's uh, asking for more responsibility, whether that's trying for a new client or asking for a new work opportunity. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there. The worst that's going to happen is they'll say no. Love it. What's one thing on your bucket list? Write a book. I don't know what about, but I would love to write a book. Uh, I've had that on my list for about five years. And I just have no time right now. Um, so maybe when I'm a little bit older and maybe semi-retired, that'll be a thing. But yeah, definitely that. I look forward to reading that, which is a great segue to my last question. Do you have a book suggestion for my new fake book club? Love that. I love that it's a fake book club. So good. Um, I do. Mm. It is Eggshell Skull by Brie Lee. So mm. she is a fantastic journalist, ex-lawyer. This book is basically a memoir that she's written um, about her experience working as a judge's associate. Um, she oversaw a whole bunch of cases around sexual assault. Um, mm. And it's kind of a nice 
blend of her work experience and how confronting that was along with her personal experience of sexual assault as well. It is kind of a heavier book, but it is really powerful and it talks a lot about the Australian justice system. So it's a very interesting, eye-opening read um, and very topical, I think, with what's going on in the world, unfortunately. So yes, would recommend that. She's a great author. You're the second person that's told me about that book and given the world today, very poignant recommendation. So thank you. I shall add that to my list. My pleasure. Lucy, today's conversation has been so fantastic. How can people learn more about you and what your team do? Absolutely. Um, the best way to find out about us is to go to starstudio.com.au. So it's star with a double R or mm-hmm. find me on LinkedIn at listen to star. Uh, yeah, website's probably the best place to find us. But yeah, it's been so much fun. Thank you so much for having me, Jess. It's always really nice to talk about copywriting and share what it actually is with people. So yes, thank you for giving me the ability to chat and be on the podcast. You've helped me run uh, our business better. And so I couldn't think of a better platform to help other businesses, you know, tick something off their to-do list and be able to showcase themselves and their brands in a better way as well. So no doubt, hugely valuable to our listeners. A huge thank you and have a lovely day. Thanks, Lucy. You too, see you, Jess.